we're going to do a quick round of intros because, you know, we have to, but <laughs> my name is Jing. I work on the uh, marketing side. And I'm Chris from the design side of things. So thank you for joining us and uh, chatting with us about Star Wars. We're excited to to definitely get into your questions. Um, now let's let's just dive right into it. We're just going to go through and round robin it so everyone gets a chance to ask. Um, and then we'll go right back to the top once everyone has a, uh, a chance to answer the question. So we'll start with Bantha Skull. Jason. Kia ora. Well, thank you firstly so much for having me on today. I really appreciate it. We, we really appreciate that. First question from Bantha Skull. Is the vintage collection Count Dooku revealed at London MCM appears to have very short discs in the elbows? This is a concerning trend in TVC. Most figures released in 2023 have had short elbow discs, which reduces the range of motion of the elbows less than a 90 degree bend. Safe to say objectively that the newly told figures we had, at, we had in 2022 were better than what we're getting now. Rising prices and low in quality is the same vice that squeezed the super articulated 3.75 inch line out of existence in 2014. He's given me a long one to start with. Can this reduced range of motion, the elbows be looked into and reversed going forward? So just very quickly, I know that was long, sorry. So we got Reva here from last year and she has a massive bend in her elbows compared to, and we love Reva, and compared to say the officer sculpt, which we love as well. We bought lots of quantities of, but he has limited range. So that was my question, thank you. Yeah. I I would say it's not a it's not a trend that we're leaning one direction or another. Um, it, it's just each each of these figures is kind of approached individually. Um, sometimes the I mean, an imperial officer doesn't necessarily need the full articulation, so we kind of lean more toward detail on that. I mean, those sort of things always will come into play. Uh, we hear you guys on it, though. I mean, I don't want to I don't want to brush over that. Um, so it it is something that we will continue to look at and and try to be better at as we move forward. Um, but though there will continue to be variance and difference in in range of articulation stuff on figures. But yeah, well, we just keep learning and doing different things, and sometimes they work out better, and sometimes we learn more. <laughs> so yeah, thanks for the feedback, and and we'll keep watching. So. <laughs> Um, they gave you a, a, a long one to start. <laughs> Thanks for reading for that. Um, the Vintage Collection Facebook group. Hi, everyone. Thanks for having us again. Um, my first question was going to be the same one, so I'm going to skip that one and go to the second one. Um, it's about name characters in uh, Troop Builder um, sets. Um, this seems to be the trend lately. Um, you know, there are characters like, I don't know, the Tusken Chief, Captain Antilles, etc., that are part of the set, which were pitched to us as uh, a way for us to army build. And it seems that including named characters goes against that intention. Um, just to make this clear, we do want the named characters, uh, but if possible, we'd like to have them on TVC cards individually uh, instead of being like part of a set. Is this something that um, you maybe could look into yeah, for new sets? Yeah. Um, yes, absolutely. We've uh, I've I've read about some of those uh, feedback as well on some of the online communities. Um, I will say what we have out there now is what we have, but it's it's good because we got lots of feedback in terms of like you know things that we can do to improve as well. So we'll definitely keep that in mind uh, moving forward as well. Yeah, and I, I think some of those figures too, like we've we've tried to, we've tried, I would say like Captain Antilles and the Imperial Officer stuff, like they're, they're ones that still work visually as troop builders. I mean, there would certainly be other characters like that. So that's part of what we think when we put those sets together. But yeah, here are you guys and we'll keep going. So. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you both. James Burns, Jedi New. Hi, James. Good. Good afternoon. Thank you all for taking the time to do this. It's very much appreciated. Um, first question um, from the London jury is, why was the decision made to include four troopers in the Vintage Collection Troop Builder packs, but only two in the Black Series equivalents? Yeah. Um, you know, I, 
it is different scales and we like to keep that in mind that one is six inch one is three and three quarter inch so there's just two different scales two different needs and it's just something that we we don't want to replicate the same offering and the two pack felt like a more logical sense for that scale and more digestible true builder pack for that scale um it seems like the fan community liked that pack um but definitely let us know if there's general feedback like obviously in general but um yeah but that's that's the reasoning we didn't want to like copy and paste we that we thought that every scale needed its own consideration for how we bring it to market great thank you enoch on a single card please <laughs> enoch on a single card <laughs> heard yes <laughs> And our express, David. Good morning. Uh, here's a softy for you guys. Um, you, it was probably already answered somewhere, but um, the vintage card backs right now on the back have a picture of the front of the card, and just wondering what the reasoning behind that and for that change, and if you guys are willing to go back to something that's more vintage in um, aesthetic. Uh yeah, it's an interesting one. I mean, we went with that way because it was, uh, well, it was referential to the vintage collection. It was inspired by the original vintage collection card. So it, it's, it's where we draw our line for our reference points. Um, but we we thought that was a nice way to kind of freshen it to be able to to give a, a cleaner view of that card on the back, which let us also like have a posed out version of the figure because that's really what we wanted to do there and in the little cross cells those posed out images were really tiny but this lets us get a little bit bigger image of the figure on there and and still reference vintage collection so i mean it's it's something that is not a set in stone thing for the card backs i mean that's where we are right now and where we'll be for probably a little while but I mean, it's certainly something we can look at refreshing in the future. Great, thank you, Bantha Skull. We're gonna go to round two. Kia ora, thank you. Shorter question this time. Uh, the helmet on the Phase One Clone Trooper revealed at London MCM has a has a slightly oversized helmet. The helmets on the just revealed Phase Two Clone Trooper four pack look they look perfect. Um, is there time to fix the helmets on the phase one clone before the release? Yeah, um, I think what we landed on for the removable helmet for phase one is where we are releasing. Um, but it's really good to know what fans appreciate that you like the four pack that was recently announced as, as well. Um, so definitely keep just letting us know what you want and we keep that in mind for future requests as it makes sense. But it's it's good feedback to know that the that it was perfect, the four pack that was just released. I'll yeah, quote you they, on that. It's perfect. Well, <laughs> I'll let Emily know. And the and the and the phase one clone trooper card back is just amazing. Well done. Thank you. Oh, yeah, that was a good one. Thank you. Um, okay. Star Wars, the vintage collection Facebook group. Um, just to stay on 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 topic about the helmet, I do agree that they look perfect in terms of size and proportions, but we've noticed that there are some paint apps, silver paint apps that are missing on the on the you know the mouth and the and the vents. Uh, if you look at the at the two twelve uh, TVC figures, they do have the the silver paint apps also in the black series one, but uh, those apps seem to be missing at least in the pictures that we saw. And maybe those are just prototypes, and this might be fixed. No, I, I think those are those are representative of what those are going to be. And with those, especially with the Troop Builder packs, they're ones where we're trying to get you guys a, a nice affordable offering there. So like, looking to make those a, a more streamlined approach to things. Um, I think we've we've gotten a little ahead of ourselves on a couple things, but um, but that's that's where those figures are. Uh, certainly look at that going forward and and make adjustments as we can though okay thank you cool jedi news jane you <clears throat> excuse me you seem to have turned around the ahsoka figures in record time and um it's it's really really refreshing to see those so quickly especially you know within weeks sometimes after the series uh as opposed to the mandalorian where in some cases we waited two years for a figure um is that representative of where where you are now working with Lucasfilm, 
or is is it on a project by project basis that you're given different assets at different times depending on the project? But it it all varies. Um, some of it's just about how those shows are made, um, and and which things are important to to be holdbacks and and to wait for a, a reveal in content. And but we work with our our partners at, at Lucasfilm and trust them implicitly on that sort of stuff. So, I mean, it it's a dialogue about what makes sense and and how to how to make that timing work. I mean, we all hate spoilers, even on the team. And and doing this job is living in a world of spoilers and trying to to judge which ones make sense to hold back from from even from our team um, for development reasons, for storytelling reasons, all that stuff. And like I said, it, it's an ongoing and continual partnership and discussion with Lucasfilm about what makes the most sense. So I mean we we love getting stuff out in time with content like there's there's nothing better than that um but we don't want to do that at the cost of anything else so All right All right Endor Express David Hi I wanted to ask about the transition of the cardboard packaging back to plastic and um as like from a team perspective you, you know, if there was like a nail in the coffin that kind of just just changed everything back, and if the you know the whole experiment was uh, was worth it at all. Um, yeah, I mean, I would say we heard from fans that they wanted to make sure as a collectible item that the product was visible in the packaging, especially for the segment collectibles. Uh, action figure. So I think it's just honestly just listening to that feedback. You know, the the new window and blisters on our products still have that like bio PET or recycled PET aspect of it. So that will still help us minimize waste. Um, but obviously knowing this community, knowing how important it is to sh see that figure, it's something that we wanted to to address. So that's that's where we are moving forward. Um, and, you know, it, it seems like that's where the community wanted us to be as well. So that's you know, hopefully uh, the the path that we think everybody wanted us to, to be at. Yeah, so we're balancing the both, but it's it's good to to have our um, our collection out there as you guys know it, know it and out. Cool. All right, we're going to go back up to the next uh, round. Um, Bantha Skull. Kia ora again. Um, so this one's coming back to the the clone trooper four pack set, which I said before the helmet is perfect. Um, <laughs> the, this question's about sort of the the mix of the pack. Um, so it contains two all white clones, uh, a th one thirty three thirty second trooper and a five o first. And there's not a lot of plain white clones in the movies. If you look, it's uh, it's even arguable whether they're there in Revenge of the Sith or not. So this one was about, you know, could we get a decent squad of some of those to army build? Because I think in particular, 501st are extremely popular and people want to buy lots and lots and lots of those. So yeah, that's, that's great feedback. I mean, it's that set was one where we we knew we wanted to do a different variety, but it was it was a struggle to try and figure out exactly what that mix would be. We didn't want to not deliver plain troop building clones but we wanted to get some of those other ones in there um we love hearing that that you guys have a different mix in mind for that and a different balance so that's that's a great info for us to move forward so yeah it, keep that sort of feedback coming um we are never going to be perfect at this i mean we're we're collectors we're fans but we each have our own our own kind of vision on this stuff and the important thing is that we get you guys what you want, not what we specifically want for ourselves. So, yeah, keep that feedback coming, and and we'll keep tuning things in as we go. Cool. All right. Uh, the Vintage Collection Facebook group. Thank you. Once again, the the Kiwi man beat me with the question, so I'm gonna <laughs> keep that one and go to the next one. Um, you stated uh, before that um, new figures. Um, I mean, new media figures are more in demand for more in demand for uh, the Black Series, and that TVC steers more towards OT and you know other stuff. But recently, you um, announced 
uh, Jackson and Stavro for the Black Series, and we are a bit jealous about that. So I just wanted to convey that message. Um, can we expect something like that for TVC? <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, if there is demand, uh, it's definitely just good to let us know. And I, I think it also sparks um, discussion on the vintage collection, especially in your Facebook group. So it's just good information for us to have in general moving forward. So, you know, if, if there's the right demand, we definitely keep those suggestions in mind. Um, in terms of Black Series getting it, like we certainly know it's not one size fits all. It's not like you know, the vintage uh, collectors only want old media and doesn't want something from new entertainment and vice versa. So we definitely want to balance and understand that like everyone is a different and there's a little flavor for each of the collectors. Um, but it's also good because it definitely sparks conversation and insight into what each, you know, all the, the different groups and community want. So um, it was it was good to, to have that discussion. Uh, we'll keep in, in mind for sure in terms yeah. of uh, future offerings. Yeah, well, and I would say too. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of nuances in those those characters. So if if Jackson makes it to the top of the bracket, I think yeah, we're Jackson having a different right. conversation. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Put him on there, see how he does. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Yeah, but no, thank, thank you, you for that feedback. Um, and yeah, keep the keep the conversations going. Cool, Jedi news. Uh, the two recent retro collection waves from Ahsoka and the Book of Boba Fett have been very well received. Um, but not being able to buy them in waves has meant that certain specific figures are selling out. And uh, that's caused problems because people have only been able to get six of the seven figures or something. Um, with Hasbro Pulse being able, you know, why can't these be sold in sets in the same way you've done the really, really successful box sets with A New Hope, which have worked out really, really well? It will surely make it, it easier for Hasbro Pulse to sell one SKU rather than seven or eight. Um, and I just wondered if there's any plans to address that. Um, there's nothing specific planned right now to address the concern that, that you've expressed. Um, it is a continual concern, then we're trying to always find ways to to address that. Um, it is, it's not as straightforward as saying, well, we have them in a box, we can sell them individual, or they're individuals, we can put them in a box. Unfortunately, it doesn't quite work out as simple as that, um, but it's something that that we're aware of and we're trying to find ways to to work around those issues. Um, we've said it before, uh, the best thing for all of us is if everybody gets exactly what they want um, and trying to find ways to make that happen will continue to be part of what we do. Um, so you'll, I mean, you'll probably see some involvement of those plans and, and ways we do that stuff. But uh, yeah, there's there's not a specific system right now for that. So. Um, some yeah, of those but... figures that have, I was going to ask, some of those figures that have sold out so that people can actually get the sets, will you try and make additional quantities available? Yeah, I, I think that's not out of the question. Um, so it's, yeah, uh, and I think things selling out is is awesome that encourages our sales team to to forecast stronger and we make more the next time so yeah if it's it's not a bad thing when things sell out it's just unfortunate for the fans who continue to want those pieces so we'll we'll look for ways to to help that um but i think for general strength of the line when things sell out that's awesome um and or when when sales are really strong like that so yeah i We'll just keep we'll keep working on it, and we're always trying to improve. So, thank you. Endor Express, David. This question re, um, is about the clones and the amount of them in a given year. Maybe I'm not as big of a clone collector. Is there going to be? Um, I mean, do the clones take up a lot of um, slots for new figures, or is it just kind of more like? Now it's kind of more like, oh, this is a, just another set we're putting out. So there's more and more product, and it just looks like there's a lot more uh, than standard times. Yeah, I I think that's that's one common misperception or misconception is that the that some of these figures displace other figures, um, when in fact, like a, a redeco or a new clone is actually additive to the line. It doesn't replace a figure. It's 
it's coming in and hey, like we have this, but we haven't done a 501st clone, for example. And we can do a 501st clone using that existing tooling and add to the offering so it, it becomes more figures. And and that's what we're trying to do with those things. We've heard a lot from from some fans that that clones and variants of clones are a, a specific place that they want to build and continue to build out. So that that's a natural place to hunt for those. Um, we do that with other figures as well. And those those redecos or refreshes where we're bringing out a figure that's been out previously, those are just adding to the overall offering, not taking away from anything. Yeah. Thank you for asking that question, though, because I think we get some of that feedback and it's not it. It's definitely a different um, different place for us, but we we do hear feedback that clones are important to the fan community to build out. Um, so that's also important for us to hear. All right, Bantha Skull, going back to the next round. Kia ora. Um, so previously you've told us that you do still have access to the legacy collection tooling, which is awesome. And HK47 is the first one of the legacy collection uh, tooling that's been re-released in Vintage Collection 2.0. So this is now a wish list of tongue twisters. So can you look into re-releasing the other Legacy Collection figures such as Duran, Nysad, Malakali, Hrek Kalfas, and Leeson Syrup. I bought this one off eBay, it cost me a fortune. And Hrek Kalfas is such a popular baby name in New Zealand, so we'd love to see that in the Vintage Collection. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, no, I mean, I'm glad you guys like the the HK droid um, and and some of those other classic ones. Those are those are definitely ones we'll look into. That is a that is a mouthful. So I am glad we're recording this. Um, but yeah, it's the, those are fun characters to get to, and those are perfect examples of figures that would be additive to the line where they wouldn't replace something. But we've got those. We've done them before, and if the timing makes sense, and we're and we wouldn't if and there isn't a pack refresh or something that would make more sense because it one of those pack refreshes might replace a different pack refresh it might be that sort of thing so we we'd look at the individual trade outs there but um no that's a that's a fun list for sure so we'll look into that it's it's funny are, are the fan pollings going to baby names now too <laughs> that'd be really hilarious <laughs> Feel like it's it's everywhere pop culture wise. Um, all right, vintage collection and Facebook group. Thank you. Um, I would like to go back to something that we discussed during the last Q and A. I believe we also discussed about this in um, London. Is the Hildebrand logo that is you know uh, we want it if possible to be moved. So it, I mean the the warning doesn't obstruct the obstruct the logo. And you said that you were looking into this and we are curious if you have any progress to to share yeah so we don't have anything specific to share regarding that but we heard that feedback loud and clear um so it's it's something we will definitely keep in mind um as we look into future items that might have that logo thank you yep but yeah we hear from the community so definitely keep letting us know things like that we'll we'll definitely keep it in mind we would. All right, Thank Jedi you. News. Thank you. The vintage. Uh, this is. I know somebody else has touched on this already, but the vintage collection is sort of lagging behind in certain areas, such as Rebels and the Bad Batch and other figures like that. And there is a demand. And I think vintage collections do want those, as you've seen from the Ghost. The Ghost has lab proved that uh, that those figures were very much wanted. Um, are you aware of? the figures that are missing from the vintage collection that you've done in Black Series? And are there plans, albeit three, five years, but are, are there plans to fill some of those gaps? Yeah, I mean, we are definitely aware of what is um, what is in the two scales, for sure. Um, you know, it's something, the figures for the two scales aren't always replicated as, you know, we brought it up in this interview previously. Like we try to balance the needs across the two uh, for sure. But 
Um, there are figures that are done in vintage that's never been done in black series, like the barge denizens, for example. Those are a good example of that. We and we just want to keep in mind, like definitely the requests out there and those polls that the fan community put out there. These requests in these interviews, for sure, is is definitely give us us information on figures that they want to see for the vintage collection. Um, but we're definitely aware of gaps. Uh, we def there's just there's we're so lucky that there's just a repertoire of like so much that we can put out there. We wish that we had all the bandwidth and manpower and I could clone Chris five times. Going back to David's question, I'll just clone Chris a few times um, and have him, you know, and Emily and Chris as our designers just do all of right. our products for us. The, the truth um, builder set nobody wanted. Yeah. <laughs> true builders of Chris. <laughs> And, and and Emily and Eric, people definitely want those. <laughs> I think I think um, having a Chris Army set would do very well, actually. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, what, isn't there a, a figure of Chris floating around somewhere too? Uh, you I don't have him at my desk. I have everybody else. And we're getting Patrick as well. Yeah, we're getting Patrick. So we need Jing <laughs> and Eric and some of the other team members. So. Yeah, those yeah. Migs those Migs Mayfeld figures are probably about as close as you're going to get to me. Right. <laughs> Um, but yeah, so to answer your question, James, like we are aware um, and we definitely want to keep in mind what the community is asking yeah. for. So let us know and we will pay attention right. to, to what, what you guys are saying. Thank you. Cool. All right. And or express. David. So um, back to the vintage collection. Um, is it harder now to make uh, full waves of one style of entertainment? So like you had announcements of Cassie and Andor coming back and Finn coming back from Force Awakens, but you know, are there's a lot of figures in those movies and shows that are can need fleshing out. Is it harder to just do a whole wave of one move a movie that's been or already been released, or is it right now you're just kind of like filling in holes where you kind of want to plug in? So I guess it's kind of related to the previous questions, but not really. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I mean, it's not, it's not like it's harder per se. It's just definitely, it's related to your point, to your previous question, like a balance of the items that are out there. Like, does it make sense to do a full wave of certain entertainment when fans don't want, like, you know, number three or four or whatever it is of a wave? Um, sometimes there, it just makes sense to refresh an item that needed an update, either on a card bag that's never been before, like we get requests like that, or a photo reel since that technology didn't always exist. Um, things like that also kind of bring us, bring into our decision of when things get released and things along those lines. So um, it's not that it doesn't make sense. I think, you know, we sometimes get close to that, um, like a, a, a wave of like, closer, more Ahsoka figures, closer to Ahsoka timing, things like that. Um, but it's it's a balance of getting figures out there when it makes sense to get them out there with an update that makes sense to, to have out. Cool, thank you, David. Um, I'm gonna go back up for the next round, Bantha Skull. Kia ora, thank you. I call this question a tale of two droids. Uh, in 2001, Hasbro released this little beauty, FX7. It has 18 very thin arms, and they each have elbows. I'm sorry to use the E word. Uh, <laughs> and 2023, we got Chopper. I love Chopper, and this joint is amazing, but he doesn't have elbows. So the question is, you know, technology improves. We've seen amazing increases in all the figures. It seems a little bit counterintuitive that we can't do elbows on droids anymore. But is there something else you could tell us that may be behind this? Is it, is it about cost? Is it about factory demands? Is it regulations? Or what might be behind the change? Um, I, I don't know the specifics on, on Chopper in regard to that, but I, I would say yes. <laughs> it's all of those concerns come in on each figure. Um, and things... We're in an environment where regulations do change, where capabilities change on specific machines sometimes, and like those sort of things. And we're we're constantly evaluating and and trying to to find that that perfect pathway there. I have one of those exact FX7 figures sitting on my desk at the office, right above my monitor. I'm I'm well aware of that figure. Um, it's it's a beautiful piece, um, and I don't think that figure. I don't think that figure would pass some of our, our quality standards that we have evolved to now. Um, and 
I think that's that's just part of the landscape we live in. Like those those requirements change and move, and and figures will change and move over time as we do that stuff. So it's it's just trying to uh, trying to walk the line, and cost is always going to be a part of this. I mean, every time you that FX seven, I suspect would never pass on many levels today, both from a cost. I mean, that's got to be a, an exorbitantly expensive figure to make. Uh, just assembly labor alone on all those arms. I mean, I I don't think we would ever do that in today's world. Um, but I say that, and then next week something might change, and who knows? Um, so it's, I mean, that's where I hesitate to any time tell you guys that it's off the table, or that that something's a hard line, because it's not. I mean, things do evolve and change, and and we're trying to push boundaries on all these things so sometimes we get a little further with those pushes than others yeah Th thanks thanks for your answer and that that's that's fascinating because a lot of people would say just take that figure and chuck it on a tvc card and we're good so that that offers a lot of insight about that and yeah yeah and we really yeah. appreciate chopper his little what 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 head joint yeah yeah that that was a, a great fun addition that the team managed to work in so yeah very cool articulating head He's giving us attitude, even in toy form. Um, it's one of my favorite figures. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, and who knows what the future holds in general. Like Chris said, you know, we're constantly learning and adapting and trying new things. And, you know, yeah. never know. And, I mean, and that's everything from materials to machines and how we do this stuff changes. So, yeah. Um, and I'm surprised, Chris, that you weren't just like, it's right here. <laughs> I would have. He's right. I, I know exactly He's where he York. is because I play with him at the desk all the time. Yeah. But <laughs> yeah, just <laughs> reach like, in this it. front of the screen. Yeah. Um, uh, all right. The Vintage Collection Facebook group. Thank you. Um, you know, August and, and September were very busy for collectors. A lot of, a lot of things hitting at the same time especially some big tickets like, I don't know, the Ghost, the Throne Room, the N1. Um, and that made some collectors have to, to choose one over the other one. Was that due to supply, supply chain uh, reasons or maybe, I don't know, if you can explain the, 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 the reasons behind that, maybe it's because you have so many things in store for us for the future that you needed to carry some things you know um any any comment on that because it, it was tough for our wallet yeah um i will say this we we always have many things in store for you <laughs> it's, um so that's always a good thing actually today we had some drops for gift the galaxy as well um so after this interview i'm sure you guys are gonna go take a look definitely go take a look at all the you know, get the Galaxy items that dropped today. There is a retro item, James, um, for you to peruse at your leisure. Um, but anyways, um, it would, it would, I would say it's, we want to get the community items that they want and they appreciate and they want to buy into. Um, we understand that September and October was, was a harder month in terms of everything hitting at once. It's something we can, absolutely keep in mind to your point supply chain always comes into play and we'll also look into planning it out um, in the future as well for for things along those lines as well so it's we will keep that in mind for sure moving forward yeah well and that's part yeah. of why we try and be transparent with you guys and announce stuff pre and get pre-orders and all that so that you can you know it's coming and can budget for it and i know that's sometimes easier to say than to do um, but we try and we try and build that and and let you guys have a window to what's coming so that it's not a surprise. Here's a ghost and an N1 and this like all hitting at the same time without any foreknowledge of it, because that would be a lot that would be a lot rougher. But at least yeah. knowing it's coming, Absolutely. you can be ready for it. So yeah, Thank you. I mean, we always want to share more information regardless of any reason. We want to spread the news. We want to talk to you. We want to make Star Wars relevant with everything um, that's going on with Ahsoka Entertainment, things along those lines. So um, that will that will be, we definitely want to keep that news fresh for you. 
Thank you. Um, James. Yeah, um, many of our many of our uh, readers have really enjoyed seeing Chewbacca Life Day on a vintage collection card, and uh, we definitely want more of that moving forward. Please. Um, the question I've got though is is why was the decision taken not to give it a number? Because um, it's available from Pulse, it's available at Disney Store as well, and some of those other figures that have been available in the same way have had a number. So it just seems a bit odd that you didn't decide to include it as part of the main collection. I don't remember the specifics on that one, do you, Jing? I mean, I I suspect that it probably wasn't originally going to have as wide a distribution as it ended up having. Um, so the, if I was guessing, I would say that's probably what it was, that it was a much more limited distribution and we didn't want to have a a much more exclusive figure stuck with a number so we we tried to make that sort of decision and we we do make that decision on other figures so i'm guessing that that's one that fell into that and then it probably got pivoted to be a wider distribution that's a that's a guess but yeah i don't remember the specifics for that either but it's you know we definitely make purposeful decisions when it comes to numbering um but in general it's good to know that like that that item was was um, taken well by the community, so. Very, very well received. I mean, we could just do with the rest of the family now, please. <laughs> you want a, a lumpy and an itchy? And, yeah. Just the season. And I'd rather have B. Arthur um, come out on a card. <laughs> Priorities, you know. Um, I'm going to, my question, my last question was somewhat answered, so I'm just going to speed along since we're out of time. Um, since you guys are doing, you know, retros are taken up on on the shelves i'm still going to put out my appeal for um, background weirdos five poa droids aliens things that don't need that much articulation that we could flesh out our dioramas and stuff like that so i think that'd be fun um please do it you know that's all <laughs> <laughs> it's it's good feedback i mean background weirdos are are near and dear to all of our hearts i think so yeah, for sure. Um, thank you, David, for that commentary. Background weedles, top of mind now. Um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think we have like four minutes left. If anyone has any other questions, I actually don't know if, I, David, to your point, like you uh, answered all your questions. I'm happy to go through one more round. People have questions or, okay. Yeah, I, I oh, have one. do you have it? Yeah. Okay. Oh, no, no, it's okay, it's okay. Ask, ask Banta School first. Oh, no, go ahead. The vintage collection. We'll just oh. do one more round if there's any okay, okay. additional questions. I, I, yeah. This is a, a question slash message because I don't, I mean, I, I need to say this. We are ready for the next Haslam. Um, Already. To share? <laughs> <laughs> you just don't want to pay for it in September or October. <laughs> no, no, it's already December, so it's okay. <laughs> you, <laughs> short memories yes <laughs> are you paying for all of ours then <laughs> <laughs> you're ready for the next hard lap that's Thank that's you. it's good to know classic collective feedback isn't it you gave us yeah. too much stuff now we want more it's uh <laughs> right it's it's <laughs> fx7 <laughs> on a card there you go. <laughs> so, so so i'll ask a selfish question then i love these packs absolutely love them but they are really, really hard to get. As my boss, Chris at Bantha Skull would say, well, that's what you get for living in Narnia, but they are very, very hard to come by from here. So I've got I've got some on the way from Taiwan, but it would be awesome if they were, you know, more widely available because we'd just love to buy them. Thank you. Good feedback. Thank you for letting us know. James. The epic hero figures, the four inch epic hero figures, um, uh, they're four inch. So are they slightly bigger? than the three and three quarter inch figures. Um, so they would look odd within um, within a diorama. Is that, that's the question. Yeah, uh, so. Yeah, there's more detail on those coming, um, but they are slightly larger. I mean, I would say if three and three quarter is our standard for TVC, four inch is the standard for those. So that gives you a, a sense. Okay. I mean, at those sizes, like that sort of difference isn't super meaningful um, for, for kind of environmental background stuff. 
but yeah yeah much more info on that that set of figures and stuff coming yeah coming in january so definitely stay tuned for like the official release news and things along those lines yeah Um, and uh, just a a question for you guys i mean because that's that four inch line is is more kid focused sort of line um is that something that you guys as as more fan sites would be interested in talking about in the future and we hear we hear questions from you guys about that stuff. Is that something you would like a deeper dive into as a fan site? I think we'd like to understand it a bit more in terms of how it fits in, and you know, the sort of question that I just asked about how those figures would look within a because you've got you know some interesting characters in those first couple of waves that would that that, that could work within uh, three and three quarter inch environments. So it would be interesting to see how they're scaled. Um, and how they look against the equivalent TVC figures. Okay, cool. No, I just I just want to make sure that we're getting the right sort of communication out to to all all of our groups, whether that be kid or fan or or any of the the partners we work think, with. So I think the community is talking about it. So um, you know, which which I think is indicative of the fact that we're interested. Right? Yeah. Cool. All right. Um, I think that's everyone's questions. Um, appreciate you spending time with us this morning or afternoon, you know, wherever you are. Um, it's always a pleasure to talk to you. And, um, you know, hopefully you guys have a great holiday. Go check out the Gift the Galaxy reveals that just dropped. Um, yeah. and, Episode yeah. one retro figures there. Yep. Go check them out. <laughs> <laughs> go take a look. Um, yeah. And thank you for spending the time. Happy holidays. And I'm sure we'll talk to you guys soon. Thank you. Happy holidays, everybody. Happy Health New Year. Bye-bye.